Welcome uh, to the WPI Worcester Polytechnic IMGD session. We are here to hear directly from the brains that work in this department, are involved in the different programs at WPI. My name is Vera Grek. I use she, her pronouns. I work in the admissions office. I am here for background support and help with the Q&A. Um, so this session will run um, about a little under 40 minutes, and then we'll have some Q&A at the end. Um, with that, I'm going to pass it over um, for all of your introductions. I'm going to turn off my screen and proceed into the background, but I'm here if anyone has any questions. Uh, yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Jennifer DeWinter. I'm faculty in the IMGD program. I teach mostly in game design, Japanese, project center work, and uh, in the graduate program on production management. Uh, Farley, do you want to go? Hi, yes, my name is Farley Sherry. I teach in IMGD. I specialize in the arts and technical art um, and trying to find crazy ways to make technology work together. Um, yeah, I think that's all about me. Mari, oh. are you ready? Um, hi, I'm Mari. I'm a senior. Um, I am GD Tech major. Uh, I have a bunch of minors, but also art. I know art things. Um, I am a student rep because I've done a lot of things and I know a lot of things. <laughs> Um, so at this time, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to give you the presentation we would normally give you if you were happily here on campus. And then I'm going to speak very quickly through it because we have a lot of information to cover. Uh, and then following that, there's plenty of time to ask me Far Farley and Mari questions. So first, I'll share my screen, um, start the PowerPoint. Uh, why am I a moron? Play from start. Close my attendees thing. Um, So this is going to begin with a short video from uh, student work that these are all undergraduate student projects that you can see in action. Uh, some of them are in VR, uh, some are handheld devices such as phones, and then some of them are for PC. Uh, this was a launch, you can purchase this on app stores now, a uh, music game, uh, of course, an adventure game, I think it was called Birthday Cake. This was a horror VR simulation. This was a VR game based on the Pied Piper of Hamlin uh, that was fundamentally charming. Um, this was just enjoyably fun to play uh, as everything was falling down around you. Uh, this is a puzzle game, an environmental puzzle game based on the Boston Commons. Uh, I think this one was also completed in, in VR as well. And so just really quickly, I want to introduce you to the director of IMTD, uh, Professor Jillian Smith. Uh, she she wasn't able to attend this today uh, because she's helping students. Uh, so here I am, but you can contact her very easily uh, at JM Smith at WPI, uh, and that is who you can expect to look at. Uh, the demos, here's the agenda for today. I'm going to show you some student work. I'm going to talk about the faculty, the philosophy, the curriculum. I'm going to talk about employment outlook and some alumni profiles. Uh, and then I'm sure that you'll have lots of questions. So if you want to type them in process, go ahead, uh, just so that we remember them, or you can save them all for the end. Um, so starting off with student projects. First, uh, I'm going to start with a few different student projects. Normally, on a regular year, we would have these students standing up in front of you telling you how awesome they are. The first one is from a small student group that, that branded them their studio Penumbra Games. Uh, it is a group of eight students. Uh, not all of them are in IMGD, although most of them are. Uh, they came to WPI, central to the WPI plan, is, is project-based education with the IQP and the MQP, which are both uh, year-long projects that, that you do. Uh, many of the course assignments are also team-based as well. And they help you prepare for larger projects. Uh, and constantly with the, the the emphasis on teamwork, we're always trying to prepare our students for uh, experience in any of the media industries. They're talking about game industry specifically, but IMGD is applicable to any of the experienced media industries. Uh, uh, another thing that they like to 
talk about in terms of how they got started in terms of uh, the support that they needed and the development of their own game sensibility is that they participate in the four game jams that we host every year through our IGDA, our International Game Developers Association Student Club. Uh, that's where they learn how to prototype and get organized very quickly. Um, game jams happen either over a 24 or 72 hour process. Uh, and it's just a great time to experiment. And then some of those games went on to become more fully fleshed games. Um, that there's easy access to resources at WPI, the computers, VR equipment, AR equipment, 3D printers, 3D scanners, laser cutters, like we have the stuff. So if you need it to succeed, it is available to you. It's all key card accessed and, and circulating. And we also have professors with strong industry experience. Based upon a 24 hour cutthroat game jam, uh, these students made this short game. You see them dancing here because they are running under a series of penalties. Uh, the judge, who will, you will see in a moment does not know what those penalties are, so is very confused. And yet this game was born from that process. Uh, once their team was formed, they created Chroma Dash. Uh, and so here is this game that they created in approximately one year of uh, part-time work. Uh, and it's a side-scrolling platformer. Uh, and, and at the bottom, you can see them moving all the way from concept art uh, into environmental art and 3D modeling. Uh, they showed their game at Boston Fig and got a lot of feedback. WPI hosts tables at both Boston Fig and also at uh, PAX East when there's not a pandemic and we can actually be around other human beings. Um, the next group I'm going to talk about is actually Mari's group, uh, but I'll talk about it for you, Mari. This is Sunburst Studio. Uh, they like to call themselves professional unprofessionals. They, in fact, formed prior to coming to WPI on the, uh, on the class Facebook group. Uh, and so they all knew that they wanted to come in and start playing around and making games. And uh, they joined uh, together in order to make Slip Time Sleuth. And so here is this game that you can now download from Steam that's been fully launched. Uh, and the idea is that you, you time, time manipulation is the mechanic to solve a series of puzzles. Uh, and so you can go back in time and forward in time and change the environment in order to get access to different assets and solve different types of puzzles. Um, I'm just going to let it play a little bit before then talking quickly about uh, their development process was hilarious. Uh, they participated very strongly in all the clubs on campus. And so this includes our IGDA club, which I already talked about, the Diversity in Games Club, which they were members, uh, leading members of and helped run things in, uh, and then a series of other extracurricular opportunities. So they were taking advantage of that and being leaders in that. Uh, they showed their game uh, oh, actually, not even showed their game. They they won the Mass Digi Grand Prize Challenge, uh, received a lot of cash for further development and also mentorship through Mass Digi, and were able to then launch the game as a professional studio. Um, so let me just talk about IMGD really quick. It's one. It, it is the world's oldest degree program in game development, interactive media and game development. We've been around uh, formally since 2006, and we were doing work slightly before that. I think us and Champlain launched at the exact same time. Uh, we have 21 dedicated faculty and over 80 courses in IMGD. We do all kinds of things. We do technical game development, such as engine architecture, network, networking, PCG, game AI, uh, virtual and augmented reality, digital analytics, uh, data visualization, all of this. Uh, we also do 2D art and animation, such as digital painting, graphic design, concept illustration, 3D art and animation, digital sculpting, poly modeling, um, and texturing. We do technical art, such as rigging, mesh optimization, motion capture, scripting, pipeline management, design from anything from tabletop all the way into digital prototyping, and then game engine scripting uh, straight up into full level design. Uh, writing, we have nonlinear and interactive media narrative writing, character development, uh, ARG games, escape rooms, we do a tremendous amount of writing in that way. Music and audio, both traditional music across the campus and digital arts music. Uh, we do sound effects, fully editing, mixing. We do like crazy stuff like robots making music procedurally and live coding music performance at algo raves. That one blew my mind. Uh, I felt a little bit old in that audience, but there you go. 
And then finally, game studies. Uh, so it's like the philosophy, the ethics, the, the study of the same way that we might study literature or film. Uh, IMGD and, and WPI as a whole uh, really believes in hybrid thinkers. We want all of our students to gain hands-on team-oriented project-based experience in every aspect of IMGD. And so what this means functionally is that no matter what your area of depth or degree is, you're taking courses across the IMGD curriculum, uh, such as programming, design, content creation, testing, and management. And the idea is that if you're a, a, a technical game developer, you need to know what the artists, the designers, the writers are doing. Uh, and same if you're a writer, you have to understand what the technical and the artists are doing. Uh, and so we we create a cohesive language to talk to each other. And we also respect the labor of one another. And I think that that's really important. So there are two different undergraduate IMGD majors. There's the BS in IMGD technology and the BA in, in uh, IMGD in the uh, creative arts. So let me first talk about the BS in IMGD technology. That's Mark Claypool in the, oh, let me go back. Don't talk, Mark. Um, we're going to just mute him and then I'm going to talk. Uh, so uh, he, he is one of the technical professors here and uh, I had him do this recording for a different event and I couldn't find slides without him. So let me just talk about this. One of the things that our program does is it takes someone with zero game development or zero computer science uh, experience and we can we can help them develop that right and uh, it, it sounds scary I know and yet many people have gone through the program and really succeeded one of my students asked me to please 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 put this course on the slide deck when recruiting because they said that so few game programs in fact teach game engine creation from scratch so uh, that they get experience uh, students at other institutions ex uh, report experiencing unity or unreal or other types of engines and of course we teach those as well but one of the things we want to make sure that you understand how to do is to create your own engines because that way you can create plugins and other things that you need we create game engine architecture blocks for things that already exist uh, we are always doing developmental ai uh, both in kind of pathfinding finite state machines and so forth uh, and also in navigation, but navigation for people and for your cameras, because like that needs to know where it's going at any time. Mark, who's talking in the bottom there, who I'm silencing, is actually one of the foremost experts in networking. So if any of you are really interested in uh, esports or live playing games or online multiplayer games, networking is a huge deal. Uh, and he is constantly working with students to teach that and to drive uh, further innovations. Um, we, I did mention the physics and the cameras already uh, for technical game development. Uh, of course, we're doing um, many other things in, in addition to that, right? Like it, this is a field that's always emerging because uh, game development and interactive media development drive so many other forms of computerized mediation, right? So like the innovations that we make here get deployed almost anywhere. And so if you have questions about what a job might look like that's not game development, but using these these types of skills. I'm also happy to talk about that. In addition to uh, what we could, would consider more traditional uses of AI in game development, we use it in like really interesting interactive media ways. So this is an example of a game in computational craft using a, a PCG generated territorial acquisition game that makes a quilt while you play it. Uh, and so that by the time that you leave the game, you, you have this artifact, this quilted artifact uh, of your playtime. Um, oh, I did manage to get Mark Knight in here. I'm going to skip through these really quick. Just ignore my life where I can't figure out how to delete things, obviously. Um, dun, dun, dun. And this slide is out of order. Okay, uh, and then the last thing I want to say about the BS is that many of our students end up getting a dual major with computer science. So IMGD is a top ranked uh, program in the US and computer science is likewise uh, a top ranked program in the US. About, um, a number of the courses double count towards the two majors. And so with some really uh, careful finessing, you can get those two degrees very easily. Um, and so now I'm going to talk about the BA. Uh, we have multiple avenues in the BA, and I'm actually going to go back those couple slides because I, they were out of order. Uh, one of the avenues that you can get is a concentration in BA for writing. We, in fact, hired someone out of the industry who is a very accomplished writer, uh, uh, Ben Snyder. You can you can look him up. He's really impressive to teach. Um, 
uh, game writing. Uh, but in addition to game writing and, and interactive media writing uh, and writing for screen, we have traditional arts, right? So let's talk about art at IM in IMGD. So we go anything from traditional arts like figure drawing and digital painting all the way into 3D poly. 3D modeling with poly modeling um, into the more modern 3D sculpting. Uh, these are examples from one of our professors, Ralph Sutter, uh, who is a, an exceptional uh, 3D sculptor. Um, and then we go into technical art, which includes, of course, things like rigging, optimization, and so forth. Uh, in both 2D and 3D, we teach animation as a whole process from idea to script, storyboards, thumbnails, animatics, animations, and post-production. Oh my gosh, I'm talking very quickly. Um, and in teaching the 2D animation and, and also the 3D animation, we spend a lot of time on the 12 animation principles that you would learn. Um, uh, and then we figure out how those animation principles need to change uh, when you're working in a dynamic 3D environment where you can't always uh, control the camera. So here's some just some student work samples that I'm going to go over really quick. Uh, this is uh, concept plus model equals life, right? So we have like these concept arts, we have a model that we're working from, and then we get to create our own pieces of art. Uh, and so you can see how the students are creating those. This is a first year student after one art course uh, moves fairly quickly uh, as we as we teach all the core concepts. Um, the idea of making a lot of these assets is that they have to be functional art, that they just can't be art for viewing, they're not static, so they have to be functional and they're often used in games, films, medical animations, and much more, uh, and, and they're, they're created and optimized for that. Um, there is, and, and Patrick, look, he's got this cute video here that I'm, I'm not going to play because we started late. Uh, where the assignment was to adapt a current movie and reanimate it for a different purpose. Um, and Patrick came in and was not intending to be an artist at first and took an art class and switched off of his major into our major uh, because it brings together art and technology. And his love was with the technology side. And then he found out that the technology allowed him to express things. Um, so here is more work from a student uh, from concept to completion uh, and in many in here a, a ton of student work now that you can kind of see however you want to imagine uh, your type of art and art voice coming we teach you how to develop that. Um, so oh this is sweet I think a student made this for me nothing's out of reach uh, we create technically sound artists uh, and that is a really important thing like why would you come here for art instead of an art school uh, we have the emergent technologies but we also develop the emergent technologies for art uh, and so we make sure you have both kind of the visual design aesthetics but also the scripting languages the the technical competencies the ways of working in a pipeline with other other technologists to do work. Um, more on the IMGD. But, oh, look, did I do this freaking again? I'm going to just fast forward. Oh, no, I didn't. More stuff. OK. Play from current slides. So what was I skipping? Oh, the music concentration. So we have a music concentration. Uh, and the music concentration does everything from traditional music, uh, digital audio music, uh, sound folio, uh, audio technologies, uh, and so much more. This is just a sample of, of music done by Keith Zizza, who worked in the industry for over 20 years before joining us. Uh, this is one of those musical robots I was talking about. And so they're, they're getting their inputs from environmental sources. This is Professor Scott Barton, uh, who's an expert in musical robots. Um, it is crazy and insane stuff. I love it so much. Uh, let's just talk about the curriculum at a glance. Actually, before I do, I do also want to say IMGD is the only uh, major in the US or the only program in the US that offers every part of interactive media and game design as a unique major. So it's the only place that you can do technical development or 2D art or 3D art or music or sound or writing or design, 
right? Like, so we, we cover all the different domains and we're able to cover all the different domains because we've been around for so long. Uh, so the curriculum at a glance, this is a lot of boxes. You don't need to read them. What I'm gonna be doing is illustrating as I walk through quickly. So here's the flow chart. In the first two years, all of our students are taking what are called these fundamental courses, right? So it's like uh, ethics, writing, some art, some game development process, you're making games, you're drawing, you're designing stuff. From there, if you are an IMGD BS student or a technical game developer, you're going into like novel interfaces, technical game development, immersive HCI, uh, special topics. Or if you look over here at the CS3041 human computer interaction, it's got that weird dot because it connects onto the entire CS curriculum. So you got the entire CS curriculum to also choose from. Um, if you are a visual art or a technical artist, you're moving into advanced art courses, uh, 2D and 3D animation, elect interactive electronics arts, concept art, animation studio, motion capture, and so forth. If you're a design and writing student, you're going to be moving into our uh, advanced design and writing courses. Um, and those will take you all the way into the graduate course offerings, which all of our undergraduates are also allowed to take. Uh, the other opportunities that are curricular or extracurricular is that we have a partnership with Worcester Center for Crafts for more traditional uh, craft-based arts like ceramics and glass, glass blowing. We have an IMGD lecture celebrity series where uh, people, big luminaries from the field come in and give talks and hang out with our students. And so we've had like John Romero and Brenda Romero and uh, Chris Crawford and oh, why am I blanking on his name? The guy that did Dinotopia, like they just kind of come in, Jonathan Blow, they're coming in and just hanging out with students, giving a, a, a lecture. It's it's awesome. We have these things called master classes where when our students say that we want to do something and our curriculum doesn't quite do it, we uh, bring in someone from the industry for one to three nights. We cap the class at 12 people. It's offered for free, so it's non-credit bearing. You don't get any credit for doing it, but you also don't have to spend any money on it. And then you get to work closely with an industry professional doing something uh, in that area. Uh, we have an IMGD minor, we have a MS program, and you can have a five-year BS MS. So instead of doing four years of undergraduate and two years of a graduate program, in five years, you can get them all done as well. Uh, as undergraduates, that might be the one that you're most interested in. We also do have an MFA and a PhD. Uh, we have a robust Worcester developer community, and we also are part of the Greater Boston uh, Metro game development community, which of course hosts Boston Fig and PAX East. Uh, we have a heck ton of student clubs. We have IGDA oh, that makes Jennifer. games. Yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but don't forget, we also have Mass Digi now. Well, I, I got it coming. Oh, sorry. That's fine. So we have IGDA, which makes games. We have GDC, which plays games. We have eSports, and they play games, but differently than GDC. We have diversity games where, where they focus on inclusivity, like writing for inclusivity, designing for inclusivity. Um, and in addition to that, I clicked away from this. Uh, we have a heck ton of labs. We have a VR lab, uh, augmented reality lab, a green screen room, 3D scanning, 3D printing, an audio recording room, a video recording room, Wacom screens, Cintiq Wacom screens, in all of our labs, a giant screen in FOISI and so much more. So, uh, and we got a new building coming up online that's gonna have even more labs for us. It's very exciting for us. Uh, we also recognize that games are international. Uh, so not only do you have all these experiences on campus and you also have all of the international experiences via the IQP at WPI, we also have IMGD specific opportunities. Uh, so students can go, mostly they tend to go to Japan, they can go to Japan, Sweden, Australia, or New Zealand uh, to make and develop interactive media and or games. Here's a very sweet picture of a group that I had over in a lab. We have a partnership with the University of Hovda in Sweden, uh, where we co-convene some of the classes in order to give people a international distributed uh, development experience. Um, and uh, why Sweden, you might ask yourself, because Sweden is killing it in the international game market uh, with things like Candy Crush and Clan of Warriors and whatever. So the employment outlook is really impressive. So the last time we ran these numbers was in 2017 and 2018. Uh, the entry level for an engineer or programmer is 72,000. An artist or animator will make 55, designer 55. It varies by skill and location. Oops. Uh, our students make 72 
eight on average coming out of our degree. Uh, and so we are at the high end of the employment outlook. Uh, and that average, of course, is aggregated across many different things, like our students are prepared for many different types of careers in, uh, in technical interactive media development. Um, and so we're able to be so successful in this because we have a lot of professional support. Our Career Development Center is the only school to be ranked top ranked in the three important areas, best career services, best career placement, and best school internships. We have WPI itself has one of the best retention rates in the country at 95%. Uh, and I'm gonna talk about messaging in a moment, but we also showcase the heck out of our students' work, right? Like this is our um, booth at PAX East where we pay for a booth so students can show their work to the community. We track our alumni, we track uh, quite often and, and about in this last round, 60% uh, responded to our surveys. 45% of our students ended up in the video game industry as we might understand it traditionally, such as Riot, Hasbro, Harmonix, Activision, Blizzard, Bethesda, right? 25% ended up in technology or engineering degrees, so they're using all the same skills going over into this uh, parallel area, 5% in interactive media or web development, 5% in grad school, and then 20% other. I'm not trying to hide nefarious things with that 20% other, like one person went to Africa to start an NGO, two people went off to become teachers in K through 12, right? Like they're just going off to do all kinds of interesting and different things. And in addition to all of that, right, all of that employment outlook stuff is that we are a Mass Digi college. And just recently, Mass Digi moved to WPI. They used to be housed at a different university. They are an economic engine in games and media originally based in Massachusetts but now serving a global market their goal is to create multiple avenues and pathways for students to enter the industry uh, have internship opportunities but also to develop their own ideas and launch their own businesses um, and as a result we've had like a large number of our students um, have either launched games while they're students or they've gone on to launch studios after um, after graduation. Uh, in addition to all the work that they do for our students while they're on campus, they also run summer internship programs and other developmental opportunities. Very easy for our students to get to. So let me just talk about the employment outlook very quickly. Uh, so here's just some uh, just some names and pictures to go with them. We have a slew of people who went to Harmonix to become lead developers. Uh, Mary Yovina uh, actually went to the Japan Project Center uh, early in its instantiation and then went on to become uh, the lead UX person there. Uh, Robert McKenna went to Boss Key to become a technical game developer. Uh, Driggsy went to Bose, and this one's a super interesting one because you don't think of Bose as game development, except for like they have these augmented audio reality glasses and they needed apps and ways to interact with uh, this new type of augmented reality that that wasn't visually based. Um, and so he's doing all kinds of interesting things there. Uh, Max went on to become a researcher at MIT Lincoln Labs. Uh, Evan went off to Blizzard uh, to do uh, technical game development and networking. Um, Michael started as an intern at Bethesda when he was a student here, and then it turned into uh, his first job upon graduation. In addition to them landing in their own companies, like I said, some of our students go on to launch their own studios. Here are some examples of studios that are actually still around and making things. So uh, these two students, Adam and Riley, went on to create uh, Risen Games, and like their most uh, successful game is StarCraft. Um, Alex Schwartz, who was the founder of Alchemy Labs, won a best VR game of the year for Job Simulator. Uh, and he subsequently sold Alchemy Labs to Google and then returned to the Boston area uh, with an undisclosed ridiculous amount of money. Um, and here's just to, to wow you with just a sheer number of letters on a page, game credits that our students have done. And so that was me talking very quickly. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm happy to join my two cohort colleagues in answering questions. We're really good at answering questions. 
So the question is for, for the BA, are writing and design one concentration or two separate concentrations or two separate concentrations? Um, and then, uh, but you'd be re required to take at least one class of each of those. What internships with AAA studios do you guys offer that other schools don't? Um, so I, I guess that's a, a, I'm trying to parse the question. So our students have gone on to do internships with AAA companies, uh, but, but the schools don't typically offer them, like they'll help facilitate those. Uh, it depends on where our students want to move to. Mari, where, where have they gone just recently? I, I know some of them. Sorry, my Zoom crashed. Um, oh, okay. Uh, what was the question? Uh, what triple A companies have the internships been recently? Um, Cyber Connect was one of them. We had an internship go there. We had. I, I know um, of a Microsoft. few places people went to go on to get a job. Right. Um, For sure, Bethesda, WB. I'm just thinking through like the recent internships that they've gone. Twitch. Uh, Twitch, they've gone on to Twitch. Uh, yeah, that is a good question. That's something other, more like career other services. And then um, Firehose. Okay. Oh, that's right. They did go to Firehose recently. Um, and Disney. Oh, that's right. They did go to Disney. I forgot about that as the internship. Uh, do you recommend a portfolio when applying? Uh, so we have something called um, a we're not even test optional, we're test free, right? So a portfolio is 100%. Um, if you have one, that's fantastic. Like show us show us where your passion is, right? Does it have to be a portfolio of art? If you're an artist, no, it has to be a portfolio of you doing projects that bring you joy, right? Like you're admitted to the university, not to the program. And so what we're trying to get a sense of is your and very you're probably better answering this than I am right like we're trying to get a sense of like where your interests are what types of things that you're doing your ability to work in groups your ability to imagine interesting things Vera keep on talking yeah so we're more looking to make sure you're a good fit for WPI not specifically to a, a major because we're accepting you to the university once you're in you can join any major you can switch your major about 20 percent of our students start undecided so if this sounds interesting to you, but you're scared of a commitment or something, just that you can apply undecided or computer science or anything else and switch um, into this major once you're in WPI. There's no expectation of a portfolio. So we're not expecting you to have a certain level. Um, again, there's also not gonna be, you know, it's not more difficult to come in with this major versus another major. So you don't have to worry about trying to game the system or something like that. It's a very flexible process. We're looking for students, again, who are very creative, who enjoy working in teams, who like that it's not just the theoretical knowledge and you don't have to apply it. So that's what we're looking for in admissions. So you don't need the portfolio. But Jen, you did a great job. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, um, go ahead, Farley. I can answer some the, the next one. So yeah. can a dual degree be done uh, that has both BA and a BS? Um, so yes. So that can be done if you do a CS BS, but not, but it can't be done in IMGD tech and um, IMGD um, art or design. Um, it just doesn't, it doesn't work that way. But I've, I only know like a couple of students who, who have done the CS BS and the um, IMGD BA. Um, I also think that something to be, uh, keep in mind is it's one of those cases where it's, Unless you're coming in with like a, a lot of AP credits, I, I don't tend to advise it because it's not necessary to work. Like you can, there are people who, um, I mean, and, and you know, Mar Mari's worked with, with some of them in Sunburst where there are, you know, Sunburst was really weird where you had the artists were actually, the people who are getting BAs actually did the programming and the people who are like getting a CES and a robotics major, they actually did the art. So it really does uh, depend, I think, a little bit more on your passion and what you want to learn. So some people treat it, uh, these things as the extracurricular activities where they get really, really good. Um, a lot of the uh, art that you actually saw 
um, that was done was in uh, my 3D modeling uh, course where, you know, they, they started it, they decided they loved it, um, and they just started, worked on it as some of their extracurricula. Um, so it's a case of if you can, I mean, it's, it's definitely great, uh, but I, I, it's one of those things where it's not necessary. You could do amazing just with following one path and working with other people. Um, and then can you talk more about the difference between writing and design. Mari, is that something that you can hit on? No. Okay. So I can I'm not either. I'm just tech. No, that's fine. I'm 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 on the design and every once in a while on the writing. So I can talk about the difference. Um, so the the writing courses are uh our creative writing courses, writing interactive characters, writing interactive narratives. So it's it's the story scripting, right? Uh how do you make an engaging story at, with interactive media as your medium? Um versus the design is how do you create the rules and the systems? Uh, how do you create a level? How do you create the map, right? And of course, no matter what, any of these is gonna have like tr tremendous overlap, right? Uh, but in terms of like the concentration, that's where you're gonna be. You're gonna either gonna be on rules and systems or you're gonna be on, on narrative scripting, narrative design. Uh, I answered that one live. What is the graduation rate for the in IMGD program? It's high. Uh, yeah, WPI has a really high graduation rate across all of them, right? So um, if if you make it through, I think I've only ever known, so I was director for five years before I stepped down for a new amazing director. And in my five years, one person didn't graduate, that that, that person withdrew. Um, like it is, um, it's high touch, right? Like we're, it's small classroom sizes, it's tight knit community among students. The faculty hang out with the students on Discord, which I'm still weirded out by a low level. And Mariko, maybe that might be one of the things that you might want to talk about is why retention is so strong in IMGD. Like, what is that community like? It, well, yeah, like our clubs are super, um, like a lot of people attend IGDA and you get to know other people who aren't in um, your year. So you have people to like ask for help on like certain topics. So, you know, like obviously as a senior, like I've done more of these classes than freshmen. So like, sometimes they ask me like, oh, what order do you recommend I take this in and stuff. And also like our faculty are nice people. Um, and so like, I mean, I have a very casual relationship with the two faculty members that are here. Um, like. And it's, it's nice because it's uh, you can like go to them and be like, oh my God, I'm gonna fail my class. And then they'll be like, calm down. No, you won't. Um, so you kind of get to know them on a more personal level than just like, oh, you teach my class. Um, so having that kind of support system definitely makes it easier to feel like, like you'll be okay because you know that they have your back. Um, and like, as long as it's not crazy ridiculous, they'll help you. Like the amount of favors that I asked from Jen and from Farley are probably um, hard to count on just your hands. So definitely- Sorry, I'm keeping strong. count. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, oops. I, I, might need to infiltrate, I might need to infiltrate your office for unrelated reasons. <laughs> um, but you get that nice bond with your um, professors and, and we're not like old academia stuck up like you must call me doctor so and so um so it's kind of nice and then the strong community and then our discord server is very active and a lot of people are in there and they're willing to answer questions and and help like guide or mentor people that need help and um you obviously always have um your faculty members to ask for assistance with and we have quite a few community events that are like like specifically there for you to get to know other people in the major and, and find people with similar interests. 30 seconds for the last question because we yeah. do have to end this session or else other. No, I get things. it. So Sorry. in going abroad in Japan, do any students go to or visit or network with any AAA companies there? And if so, what companies? We had CyberConnect come to campus, in fact, the Japanese company CyberConnect, uh, and they made 
so Naruto. many games naruto, naruto but like that's one. i always think of them as like dot hack sign right like that they, they're they've been around for quite some time um we're in kyoto and osaka when we go to japan with ritsumeikan university and osaka university uh in english speaking labs we've tried putting our students into the companies there i had a student work at nintendo once but the language barrier was so high that the student was sad um and so now we just have them have like these really robust communities with our partners uh if you're interested in that we do have a cohort of alumni in japan working in interactive media and or games and you would have access to that alumni network uh my name again is jennifer de winter if you'd like to email me follow-up questions it's jde winter at wpi.edu um again jde winter uh, but i recommend throwing jillian smith under the bus j g G. M. Smith, G. M. Smith, and she'll be fantastic in answering all of your questions. So thank you everyone for coming. Thank you everyone. And I just put Jillian Smith's uh, email in the chat there so you can see it if you're more of a visual person like I am. And thank you everyone for attending. Um, and this uh, recording will be available online as well. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesdays. Bye. Yay.